Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Anyway, before I start, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. So, um, Jeremy Whitley, I'll just say it, he creeps me out. And I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out why he creeps me out. And basically, what bothers me is, essentially, that he's like a Pied Piper. He wants to position himself almost like a Judy Bloom style of writer, where he's not just an author that kids like, but that they trust. The problem is, he has nowhere to lead them except for off a cliff. When I first got back into reading comics, going to the comic book store every week, there was what I called the wall of diversity. You would open up the door, and there would just be this wall of diverse characters, diverse creators, diverse themes, all of that stuff. Then you would have to like scooch by it to go see regular comics. And his book Princeless was there just like the first thing you see. And it's about, tell me if you've heard about this before. She's a princess who doesn't need to be rescued. She rescues herself. Oh, that's original. So this is mainly about his story in a Marvel digital series called Love Unlimited, and then it will finish up in Marvel Voices Pride number one, 2023, which I have to buy. And Amazon will base my recommendations off of this purchase forever. So the bad news is that this Gwenpool story was absolutely 100% created to influence confused young people. The good news is that nobody under the age of 36 read this thing. And Gwenpool has a really fucking weird origin. So Jordan White wanted a work girlfriend, a work wife. And no, that does not mean a relationship. Go watch 30 Rock. They were talking about work spouses 15 years ago. He hired a woman, Heather Antos, with almost no experience. And almost immediately after getting hired at Marvel, they based a character off of her, visually at least. I don't think she gets any of the proceeds. This is why human resources exist. But somehow they just let it fly. And Gwenpool is a lot like Dazzler. In that Dazzler was created right at the end of the disco trend. Do you remember the mustache, unicorns, bacon, LOL so random style of humor from like 10 to 15 years ago? Do you remember when everyone got sick of it and it was ending? That's when they created Gwenpool, which relies 100% on a style of humor that went out of style when Obama was president. Her shtick is that she's from, quote, the real world, but she can go to the Marvel 616 or other fictional universes. And originally, since it was essentially a dream, she didn't take anything seriously. Now they've put more stakes into it. I believe she's stuck in the Marvel 616. So she now considers it to be, quote, real, unquote. But we're going to see a really, really disturbing story. So it starts off, and she's basically talking about how she knows she's in stories, so she wants to be relevant. So she says, hey, I'm not really getting the spotlight. My book was canceled. Let me get a romance, and then that will get me a book again. Okay, fine. I mean, John Byrne was doing stuff like this with She-Hulk in, like, 1989. Eat it, haters. I'm in a romance comic. But you start to notice things right away. For instance, she's talking about idealized relationships and how she wants to be one, and it will raise her spotlight in the Marvel 616 meta-universe of knowing these are stories. So then she tries to start a romance with Wither, and then when that doesn't quite work and it's not really interesting, because she thinks... It's his old storyline where he can't touch anyone. And she's like, oh, Wither and I can be the new Rogue and Gambit. But then when she finds out that his powers have been fixed, she loses all interest. She goes, wait, what? This isn't a tragic romance at all? This is just a boring run-of-the-mill romance between two white super-powered 20-somethings? This will either get retconned after one issue, or we'll stay stuck in a boring relationship that doesn't have enough conflict until editorial decides they need to reset our whole universe just to break us up so we can be in interesting stories again. I refuse to be one more date. So this is like the first time I noticed like, whoa. Sorry, roll that back. What did you say? Boring run-of-the-mill romance between two white 20-somethings. You wouldn't say this for another race. It just wouldn't happen. It's also very disturbing how Jeremy Whitley poses all, 
all straight relationships is boring and we are just getting started. She says, it's all ruined. Nobody wants to read a boring normal romance, right? So then she decides a love triangle will make it more interesting. If you might say, hey, she's starting to seem like a sociopath. Yeah, she is. She's absolutely a sociopath. So then she gets excited about having a love triangle or a love rhombus, I guess. She's trying to be funny. And she mentions again, let's look at how Cyclops is drawn, another gay relationship as being idealized. This is this thruple of Jean Grey, Cyclops, and Wolverine that exists in the Krakoa storyline now. So like a complete sociopath, she just messes with the emotions of two straight men because she thinks it will make her more interesting. Then we get this really weird hint and this thing that Jeremy Whitley always does where he's like, there's no way this person is straight. It's impossible. And then she says, so much for a romance heroine, eh? I mean, the only time I've ever felt butterflies in my stomach was reading comics as a kid. It gets worse. So then she has a meet cute with Julie Power, who is gay, of course. Julie Power just said my hair is super cute. Oh my gosh, do you feel that? Butterflies! So Gwenpool admits to only having butterflies once, and it was for a character that she, quote, met when she was a kid, and the character was a kid, and she was reading about her, Julie Power. But then they met when Gwenpool was an adult and Julie Power was still a kid. It was a time travel story, and now they're in the current continuity where Julie Power and her are the same age. We fought together when I was just a kid. How have you not aged a day? So then we get to see when Gwenpool was an adult and Julie Power was a kid. And Gwenpool is more excited about this than any of the men she's spoken to ever. Even though, in the almost 10 years of this character existing, We've seen Gwenpool constantly crush on and be in relationships exclusively with men. So their meet cute is that <laughs> Julie Power saw her walking down the street that far away and said, I can't let that cute pink haired girl get crushed. You can barely see her. Is that Dre? So this is Gwenpool's thoughts. And it's funny because Purchase pointed that out, but even Jeremy Whitley has pointed this out. In an interview for this book, he pointed out how gay relationships are always presented as idyllic. So Gwenpool says to herself, I always kind of thought I might be bi, but I never went out. I never met people. I barely left the house. I never met a girl who liked me. She says, don't judge me, okay? But I think we can agree that keeping myself in the comics and relevant is important. I could even get a spot in one of those Pride Month stories. I'd look really good in some sort of rainbow colored variant of my costume. So then we find out she also has ADHD because that's how characters are defined these days. By their neurodiversity and their not straight sexuality. So whereas a few chapters ago, Gwenpool was merely a sociopath, she's now bisexual and has ADHD. This is what we call progress. So then she basically fakes her own history to get her accepted to the college that Julie Power is going to. Do you want to go out with me? Will you show me around? Oh no, that was so weird. We've only known each other for like 20 minutes. Of course I will show you around. And now they are in a lesbian insta relationship. You haul by nightfall. Look, Julie, none of those things are a reflection of who you are. Even when I read Power Pack comics as a kid, I could tell you were amazing. It's really weird that you have to keep mentioning that you first met her as a kid. Because you also met her as a kid when you weren't a kid when you were an adult. I said a lot of things to Wither and Elixir, and even Quentin, that I didn't really mean. I'm sorry, what? That is the laziest retcon I've ever seen. That's like one sentence to say, hey, you know every single heterosexual relationship or crush you've ever seen Gwenpool in? She had her fingers crossed behind her back. She didn't really mean it even when she was clearly in love or smitten or whatever. One sentence wipes it all out. She didn't really care about them. I feel bad about it. But all of these nice things I'm saying to Julie, I mean every one of them. So a sociopath. 
whose neurodiversity and sexuality changes literally chapter by chapter. Yeah, I've known this lesbian for 20 minutes, and sure, we're in love, but it's not fake like all of those relationships with men. This is real. I'm doing it. I'm kissing an amazing girl. I'm being in a relationship. She's the first person I ever felt butterflies with. I mean, feel butterflies with. The butterflies are definitely an ongoing situation, I think. But then we find out that this is already fading. So she's already losing the butterfly, she says. And I'm into her. I mean, how could I not be? She's literally everything I wanted. Okay, it's not the same as it was that day, talking about the day they met. But we can get back there. This relationship is already fading, like, within weeks. Julie Power got a Rachel Maddow haircut. So good. I mean, no complaints. I mean, what could I even complain about? This is the perfect relationship. So she asks for consent. She gets it. Then she starts having a breakdown. It's like an actual, full, complete, nervous breakdown. Please. Please stop, Julie. Again, I want to remind you, this is a character initially based on Jordan White's work girlfriend that was meant to capitalize on like bacon, mustaches, unicorns, lol so random. It wasn't supposed to be about a disturbed and disturbing character who has no sense of self, who changes their sexuality literally every chapter in a fruitless attempt to figure out who they are. So Julie Power is like, what the fuck is wrong with this crazy bitch? So then we roll back to high school, and we get the origin of how she colored her hair. Her friend group was initially a bunch of nerds who would just do LARPing and tabletop games. But then as they got older, as is normal, they started getting into relationships. She hated that. Then they start introducing her to people, men and women. So then she says she just wants to regress and be how they were like in junior high, but they're like graduating high school. So that's my boring origin story. No fireworks, no horse aliens, just a slow creeping feeling of isolation. You don't have to keep being so nice to me. It just makes me feel worse. This is an emotional vampire. Like everything has stopped to revolve around you. Once again, Gwenpool, when are you going to have enough attention. I really like you and I want to make you happy, but I can't make myself want something that I don't want and I don't want to lie to you about wanting it. Okay, this is going to make me sound like a monster because I've kissed you a lot, but I don't ever really want to kiss anybody. It's kind of gross. It's like two weird snakes wrestling in there. And then Julie Power's like, if you hated it, why didn't you say something or not do it? She says, well, I really liked being with you, and you liked it, so I figured it wasn't so bad. And I absolutely felt something with you I've never felt before. I felt butterflies in my stomach, like they talk about in movies and stuff. It was great. When you rescued me, you scooped me up in your arms, and I looked up at your face, and I just... And that lunch in the diner? Oh my gosh, I couldn't stop looking at you. I wanted to, like, touch you to be sure you were real. I never felt that before. I know, I just kind of figured that if I held on to that feeling, I could fake my way through, you know, the other stuff. Just make some noises to make you think I was having a good time, make you happy. And Julie's like, yeah, okay, yeah, you don't have to do that stuff. I know, you're amazing, and I wanted to give you that, but... And then she says, Gwen, you're amazing, and deserve to be fulfilled too. But it seems like what you're trying to be. I need to ask you something. Gwen, do you think you might be asexual? What? So I actually did a lot of research into asexuality, and it's very interesting because asexuality is very well studied. And I'm talking like back 100 years. This is like before Kinsey. It seems to me that asexuality, this is why I think it was studied. I think once they started getting into the social sciences, people were like, hey, people keep asking about my brother who never got married. Is there any way he's not gay? Because this is what they used to say about Ed Koch. They're like, oh, he's not gay. He's just asexual. Yeah, he was gay. So I think they initially studied asexuality so much 100 years ago so that people could basically say, look, look, look. I know it looks like that person's gay, but they're not. Trust us. He's asexual. Asexual is about 1 in 100 people to 1 in 150. 
But, and this is where it gets really interesting, this story is the least asexual thing imaginable because asexual people are just not interested in sex. They just don't care about it. They're kind of like how I feel about football. Everyone's watching the Super Bowl. I don't care. It's just a day. And I saw people in the comments the last time I talked about it, and they were basically like, this is the least asexual thing ever to talk about this because it's literally a subject we don't have interest in and we don't care about. And here's the key thing about asexuality. Asexual people don't miss sexuality. They just don't care about it at all. It's just not a factor in their lives. Again, like me with football. I'm not sitting there saying, I'm sorry, I pretended to like football. I really wanted to like it to be part of the group. I just don't care. It's just not a factor in my life at all. Most people love it. I don't care about it. And that's basically my analogy for asexuality. So we've seen that Gwenpool is an empty husk, that there's nothing behind her eyes. The only time she has feelings is in this weird kind of nostalgia when she meets the character she crushed on as a kid. I saw this tweet thread where T. Franklin was absolutely flipping out on this person. I know, day ending in Y. And then after just volcanically erupting at a person who did nothing, the person was like, hey, I might have missed a social cue. I'm autistic. Can you tell me why you're angry? And then T was like, I'm autistic too. It's like, no, no, no. You're a lunatic. There's a difference between being a lunatic and being autistic. Just as there's a difference between actual asexuality and being a sociopath with nothing behind the eyes, which is what Gwenpool is. So then we get this tortured analogy that Gwen feels like an alien because she doesn't have sexuality even though we've seen her have sexuality in literally dozens of comics over a decade. So after being suggested that she might be asexual, she just takes that as her new sexuality, just as she went from heterosexuality to, quote, bisexuality, not really just being gay. None of these things matter. And holy fuck, how large is this couch? That is massive. Okay, anyway. She says, okay, sorry, you're going to have to help me with this. You said you thought I was asexual. I know I didn't graduate high school, but isn't that... And then she's like, her, der, it's like cells. And then Julie Power, who is clearly a lesbian, says, but take it from a bisexual. Oh my God, nobody talks like that. Who you're attracted to and what you want from a relationship and what turns you on don't have to have anything to do with reproduction. This is the ESU Pride Club, and this is our elected ace rep, Ronnie. Let's start with the basics, Gwen. This is so Soviet. We will go to Homosexuality Center, and you will be assigned your non-straight identity. Let's start with the basics, Gwen. Being asexual means you don't feel sexual attraction, or the same sex drive, or need for sex that allosexual people do. Allosexual? You know, people who seem to let their hormones determine who they spend their lives with. So this is a classic of SJWs, and this is one of the many reasons I find Jeremy Whitley creepy. He just describes something normal. He just describes something that 99.99% .99 of people have on Earth, and he made it sound weird. They're flipping everything. Normal is abnormal. Abnormal is normal. This is basic things for a species. Reproduction. You didn't have to put that spin just to lock Gwenpool into this lifestyle forever. So she's explaining asexuality some more. It's not that we don't find people attractive or know when people are hot. It's just that that aesthetic value isn't necessarily connected directly to sexual desire. Or in some cases, we don't feel sexual desire at all. Whoop, time out. <laughs> asexuality is not actually a spectrum. I know they want to make everything a spectrum, but asexual, no pun intended, is very binary. You're either asexual or you're not. I mentioned in another video how last year, on the first day of Pride Month, Jeremy Whitley went through this extremely tortured tweet thread about how he was coming out as demi-bisexual. And I was like, okay, you're trying to make yourself like gay adjacent. That's pretty cringe, but whatever. And demi-bisexual was explained as He's never been attracted to a man. He's never been in a relationship with a man. He's never done anything with a man. But that doesn't mean that he's straight because he's open to the idea that it could happen. 
Sure, he's halfway through his life and it's never happened, but it could, which means he's not straight. And I was like, this just feels like you found a 2023 way to brag about how straight you are. Like, hey man, I'm bi, but let me be honest with you, it ain't nothing but pussy. I'm walled in by it, bro. Like, I'm not even seeing dudes. There's so many women around me. Like, okay, that's pretty cringe. You're trying to make yourself queer adjacent. What I didn't know was the reality was even more stupid in that there is a concept now called ace spec, asexual spectrum. This is a spectrum of people which includes asexuals and, wait for it, not asexuals. <laughs> they created a group that contains everyone that anyone can get into and you are officially not straight if you join it. So in the interviews for this, editor Alana Smith and Jeremy Whitley, they were going on. It was so dramatic. It's like, I was always asexual and I never, I didn't know what it was and I didn't have anyone to guide me. Ed Koch, Ed Koch, Ed Koch was there to guide you in the 1980s. But anyway, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Alana Smith and Jeremy Whitley are two cis straight white people in multi-year, in some cases, multi-decade relationships with the opposite sex. Being straight is not an advantage in media. You need to be not straight somehow. I used to joke that nobody can prove you aren't bisexual, but even that became a cliche. People stopped saying like, oh yeah, and I'm bisexual. Everyone's like, yeah, nice try. 2020 was the cutoff for that. So then this woman who Gwenpool just met describes asexuality and she says, or in some cases, we don't feel sexual desire at all. No, in all cases, for actual asexuals, in all cases, you don't feel sexual desire. And yes, there are people who just have hormone disorders, depression. The funny thing is that in my research, in the asexual, I'm sorry, the ace spec community, getting your hormones checked is like forbidden. You're not supposed to do that. As soon as you don't have interest in sex, you just diagnose yourself as asexual and then you never check into it again when it could literally just be depression it could be a bad diet it could be a hormone disorder don't get it checked out just join the quote ace spec community so she says in some cases we don't feel sexual desire at all and Gwen Poole says okay so that absolutely sounds like me I'm sorry which you the you from two pages ago or the you from two chapters ago which was a lesbian or the you from four chapters ago, which was a straight woman. How do you know what you are? What you are changes every chapter. So the homosexuality commissar says, you only have to do any of those if you want to. I, for one, am demisexual. That means I only feel a sexual attraction to someone when we already share a deep emotional connection. It's part of the asexual spectrum. Everything is! Literally everything is. Have you ever not wanted to have sex ever once? You could be a spec. In fact, you're a pretty ace. So then we get some trash geek humor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not about power ranking. And you don't have to try to be the, quote, best type, unquote, of asexual. You saw where I was going with that, huh? The spectrum is more about where you fall in terms of romantic desire and sexual attraction, which a lot of people don't realize are two separate things. You can still be homo, hetero, or biromantic. Or you can be aromantic, which means you don't like the romance stuff at all. Have you noticed that the actual definition of asexuality is always the last one she mentions? It's very insidious. Jeremy Whitley is trying to convince basically everyone that they are somehow on the ace spec. This is the second time where she's described all of these variations of essentially emotions or personality traits as being asexual, then she will at the end mention what actual asexuality is. You can be gray asexual or gray romantic, which means you feel like you're somewhere between allosexual and asexual. Okay, I think I've fallen here somewhere. I don't think I want a romance. But is there a thing where two people count on each other and watch horror movies together and, and, and? They will snuggle me and tell me things are going to be okay when I'm awake until four in the morning thinking about the heat death of the universe? Ace people kind of have to make our own rules because the old ones don't work for us. Some ace, she's still going. Some ace people like physical affection. Some don't. Some enjoy sex, even if they don't need it in the same way. Some are just happy to have close friends. The key is to be honest with yourself and the people in your life about what you want and need. Uh, can you give me just a second? 
Julie Power. You beautiful, kind, understanding, devastatingly tall, blah, 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 compliments. But I think I'm asexual and aromantic. And then Psycho Gwenpool is doing finger guns and saying, I hope you'll find the right girl or boy or non-binary hottie. I kind of hope it's a girl, but you do you. So now Gwenpool has a new identity. Yes, it's like her fourth identity in six chapters. She's now a self-described asexual icon. Now let's go to Marvel Voices Pride, which I had to buy an entire graphic novel to read four pages. This is not written by Jeremy Whitley. This is written by Mariek Nijkamp. So Gwenpool just found out she's asexual, and now it's her entire identity. Gwenpool in Everything's Coming Up Aces. Get it? Because she's asexual. Because that's, that's the whole bacon and mustaches and unicorns. That's old. Now it's just psycho eyes with nothing behind them and your newfound non-sexuality hey you true believers it's your girl Gwenpool with a new purpose in life I recently had a major epiphany I'm asexual and aromantic so I decided to be the ace icon of the Marvel Universe and look at me I'm in a pride comic of course being an icon comes with responsibilities like being out and proud so that readers feel seen and respected and finding others to team up with, because one person can't represent a whole spectrum. Besides, an icon like me needs heroes too. Seeing my own experiences reflected would have saved me from some extremely awkward situations. She's talking about every romance she's had pretty much constantly over a decade of publication history. I'm just saying, Nadia, Ace Force has a nice ring to it. Gwen, I appreciate the thought, but I already have a team. And then there's the hardest part of all not disappointing your friends or your community. Heroism comes in all shapes and sizes. For ESU Pride Club, joy is heroic. So the latest buzzword from the quote, gay community is the word joy. And it's for a simple reason. What kind of Grinch, what kind of monster would wanna argue with someone's joy? So whatever you're doing, just say you're doing it for quote, queer joy unquote, and then you essentially demonize anyone who wants to even discuss the matter. So I promised them an unbelievable pride party. Are you sure you want to handle this solo? Absolutely. We always have a big party committee. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I did not, in fact, know what I was doing. Oh, Gwenpool. Good thing I know someone who does. Please help me, queer icon dazzler. You're my only hope. Leave it up to me, kid. I understand the importance of pride. You take care of the decorations, the invites, and the people. I'll take care of the music. Gwen, you did it. With a little help from my friends. For my friends. All of my friends. This is not me agreeing to a team up. I just love dancing. Nadia, you came. Hey, asexual, you're just br Let me show you. Okay, so this is a weird thing um, that SJWs do. So... In SJW culture, you can be attacked for the words of villains. We've seen it happen to Leah Williams, who claims to be bisexual. She had a gay black man get murdered. Since he's Krakoan, of course, he was immediately brought back to life. But she really went through it as being, quote, homophobic, unquote, because a gay person was killed in her book. So you have to imply that they are oppressed, but you can't actually say or show the oppression. I have no idea what this word is. Asexual, you're just br brittle. Like what? What word is that supposed to be? And this is my responsibility too. Hey, party crashers, stay away from my community. It's protected. Take a time out between panels. Educate yourselves. Become a useful member of society. This is how people talk in propaganda. Educate yourselves. Become a useful member of society. Jeff. You're on guard duty. Make sure they read. Yeah, I'm sure the North Star coming out issue is really going to open some minds. You know, you're part of the ESU Pride Club. Wouldn't this be your opportunity for a, quote, teachable moment? Also, you didn't let them finish. They could have just been joking around. I mean, it's too vaguely ethnic, guys. That's visual code for good, right? Maybe they know you and they've seen you go through three sexualities in as many weeks, so they're a little skeptical. By all means, throw them into a pocket dimension to punish them for asking questions 
You literally didn't let them finish the sentence. You don't know what they were going to say. And again, they were just words. Then we find out what this is really about. Hey, you, ace kid reading this right now. Nobody below the age of 36 is reading this. But the intent was to influence and confuse young people. Be proud. You're perfect. Just the way you are. Thanks for letting me be who I am, guys. Are you ready for an unbelievably good time? I think tonight will be unforgettable. Happy Pride! So this is propaganda. Absolutely. And uh, it's insidious because Jeremy Whitley is, he's presenting this fantasy that if you come out as not straight, it doesn't matter what you become, just don't be straight. You will instantly get a community, get a peer group, get a group of friends. Remember, she lost her friends when her old peer group started coupling up like normal people do. She now has an entire, quote, found family, unquote, based entirely on not being straight. But we know what's behind those blank eyes of hers. Absolutely nothing. She changes her sexuality from week to week. She's straight one week, she's a lesbian the next week, she's asexual the week after. She has no sense of self, but she's fallen for all the propaganda, which she's promised endless friends, a community that protects her, a status as being special. It's literally a fantasy. Jeremy Whitley is trying to do a few things. He's trying to protect his career. Being a cis white straight male is not favorable to anyone's career in media these days. So he's made himself vaguely gay adjacent and now has been more specific with claiming quote ace spec, which is everyone but somehow still gay. And he wants to be a Pied Piper for multiple generations of kids except for he has nowhere to lead them. The only thing he has to lead them to is propaganda dreams. I just imagine him standing at the edge of a cliff, ushering children over it, saying, the life you dream of awaits you at the bottom of this cliff. Literally a few minutes on Twitter will tell you that there is constant gatekeeping, rule enforcement, and drama among the, quote, LGBT community. If it's such a great life, why are you all on antidepressants? Anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.